Hello guys, I am Shane Davis, 20-year comic book veteran. I'm here with Yancey Lin. Today is the day we are talking about X-Men as Marvel Comics is getting ready to attack the fans because guess what? They're getting ready to do a big overhaul with X-Men headed by Tom Brevoort. Now, obviously you would think attacking the fans, especially when Disney Plus is getting ready to do X-Men 97 and they're trying to capture nostalgia and sell it to you, but is it going to be the same product? Probably not. So let's kick off here with Tom Brevoort and choice words he has about the new uh, change of guard, I guess, or change of power with X-Men, which is him. And anti-wokeness or wokeness in X-Men is X-Men. Was it always supposed to be woke? And we just didn't know when we were buying it and we liked it? I don't know. Let's get into it. Well, Tom Brevoort's exact words were, this is a book about oppressed outsiders, each a minority of one for all that they share the X gene and the commonality of purpose, who are hated and feared because they're different and who have to constantly struggle to find acceptance within a society that does not understand them and wishes they would just go away. Every X-Men comics published since 1963 is about these themes to one degree or another. Without them, it won't be X-Men. I, I don't know. Did Stanley even start out like that saying, I'm going to do a comic about the oppressed minorities and give them representation? No. I want to go back on the Stan Lee stuff. Um, basically, Stan Lee, it, it, there is tape out there. You can hear audio recording of Stan Lee confessing this, that he came up with the X-Men and the X-Gene because it was really complicated to keep coming up with new superhero origin stories, you know, like uh, cosmic radiation, gamma radiation, radioactive spider. And of course, the science wasn't sound on any of this. It was just catchy science terms to throw in. Somehow somebody got superpowers. With the X-Men, he was able to say, there's just X gene. And if you have the X gene, you have a superpower and it can be whatever I come up with. So he didn't really have to come up with an origin story anymore for a superpower. It was just, you have the X gene, that's it. Now you shoot laser out of your eyes. Now you control ice. Now you can fly like Angel or you have, psychic abilities, uh, things like that. So it was a really good device for writing superheroes, which was the X-Men. Now, did it have other things like, well, mutants versus everybody else? Are they saving humans? Are they evil mutants? Of course, of course, because uh, evil mutants, they have to fight. Good mutants, X-Men versus Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Things like that kind of came out of it. Now, did this kind of mirror social issues that were happening at the time eh, not really i mean again stanley's out there saying he made sure story was first not social issues not social agendas but entertainment and stories well i think marvel though is just knowing they know that somehow because of all the questionable press that x-men 97 is getting they have to come out here and fight this so the writer of this article seems to be aligned with them in this good fight he says the source material is the most progressive stuff that Marvel Comics has ever put out, which is X-Men. The fighting against social and racial injustice is pretty much embedded in the character's DNA. And yet, we still have to deal with fans who are purposely misreading the comics and everything that came after them. Okay, okay, see, so let's get it straight. The original fans of the X-Men were the ones who liked it so much that they pushed it to the big success it was, to the point it became nominized, where all the nominees are aware of what X-Men are. And somehow those OG fans who are now in their 60s, 50s, 40s, even 30s, mm -hmm. they are the problem. They are the ones who didn't see the fight against social and racial injustice. Now, guys, don't forget, at one point they tried to argue and say, well, Professor X represents Malcolm X, who was created to represent Malcolm X. And it's like, what? Wait, no, no, no. You are taking uh, characters who are rich stuff, nothing, nothing to do with your whatever modern politics you want to shove them into and putting them into this brand new political ex explanation. It's like, Hmm. Okay, sure. Why not? One of the things I have an issue with the social agenda stuff and saying X-Men is always like that. And it's supposed to be about being progressive and representation of whatever fashionable to support this month. One of the big issues I have with that is being an X-Men reader, becoming a mutant might mean that you're like Proteus or something like you're a super powered mutant and you could just collapse reality or you could uh, become a nuclear bomb or a big threat. So when, when you're sitting here saying it's about representation or it's supposed to be metaphorically this group or that group, 
you're kind of saying that group could be potentially devastating to civilians. Oh. And that's the thing with the whole mutant thing. And this is where it becomes, are you an evil mutant? Or are you a good mutant? Can we contain your powers? What's for the betterment of mankind? All of this stuff. And, and some of these ideas, and I, I see groups kind of come at it. They're like, oh, it's about me and how I don't feel accepted by society. It's like, that's one part of X-Men is being accepted by humans. The other part is, how about you don't destroy a city block? I want to say, that on the one hand, this writer here is saying, yeah, you know, you guys, this is not for you anymore. Go away. And in the final paragraph, he says, it's important to have veterans of the comic book business who ironically has shepherded much of the comic books the anti walk types have enjoyed for decades. Push back against this ridiculous noise, the alpha piles up and drones out the more important things happening in that space. I.e., we need all the retailers, all the publishers, all the creators who work on X-Men for decades and decades to come out and say, this new stuff is fantastic, it's important. Come buy it, y'all. How? Now, hang on, hang on. How are they going to come out and tell you to buy it if they're shutting down their shops? And that's the truth. It, the one thing major comic book shops or uh, any comic book shop right now needs, small, big, in-between, they need an X-Men number one that is cash money. You're talking about the 90s. We're talking about Jim Lee's X-Men number one. We need that type of steroid put into the direct market right now. Hell, Marvel needs it. Even DC needs it. I know that sounds weird, but a rising tide raises all ships. If Marvel had this big hit X-Men number one comic to come out, it would actually increase DC comic sales just by the traffic going into comic shops. This is something everybody needs. And the pressure that old guard, old creators that made X-Men cool need to stand behind whatever hell they're going to do with X-Men and it be progressive air quotes like that. That's nobody's business. The only reason X-Men is what it is, is for the past creators. And yes, there was plot in there that they were looking to protect the humans or be mutants being accepted by society. But that wasn't the driving factor, actually. I mean, some of it was the drawing. Some of I mean, some of the best artists were working on the X-Men character development story. You know, these are the things that matter, not it, not the fact if it's progressive or if it's to some SJW's liking or does it have a social agenda baked in. I, actually, that shouldn't be there first. If it's there, it should be there like fourth, fifth tier or something. It should not be the first thing. And, and again, here you're striving. This is what X-Men has to be. And I'm going to argue and leave on this note. I think X-Men is on the chopping block. And what I mean by that is it's not going to get a fair shake at being a good reboot because people are already speculating and the expectations it has to do other things than be just a fun comic book is going to kill it. It's not given a fair chance at all. But most comics and most characters aren't today. Let's be honest. So if you guys will, please check out Inglorious Rex Volume 2. This is our independent crowdfunding comic. It's coming down in less than two weeks. We're at $41,392. If you can, please give it your support. We are independent comics, and we make comics that are fun and enjoyable. I'll leave you guys with a trailer for this smash hit comic and catch you guys again with another video. Uh, yeah, All in my chains Ain't no way that I can slow down I'm laced up, look how I shake the crown Can't touch the crown, but you can kiss the ring Close your eyes and see how I live the dream I'm too smooth, MJ with the lean uh, Don't be fooled, I can't be with the team This is over their heads, how high can it go? I'm too over the edge, got my eyes on the grow And we right back at it, keep them right on their toes Look at the way that I move, this is all that I know Cause I got the drive, I put it in gear Line them up, I don't see no competitors if it ain't first place, we really can't settle for it. Let's go up, let's go up. Get ready for it. Yeah.